Meanwhile, all of this comes as earlier in the week, we saw the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics come out with its annual summary of unionization in the U.S. In 2012, union membership rate of wage and salary workers was 11.3% compared with 11.8% in 2011. And I know uh, that my conservative friends will say, well, that's because people don't want to join unions. However, survey data shows that workers' desire to join unions has been growing since the 1980s when, coincidentally, union membership was beginning to drop. Why is that? Because we make it harder and harder for unions to organize in this country. It's relatively easy to set up a corporation. It's relatively easy to enjoy the benefits of limited liability in this country. But it's much harder to unionize. A majority of non-union workers would now vote for union representation if given the opportunity, according to this survey data. Now, one of the arguments that people make in terms of uh, diminishing unionization in this country uh, is that it is a function of outsourcing and other factors that we cannot um, really address. This is globalization. But Chris Warner at the um, Center for Economic Policy Research in Washington does a good comparison with Canada. Canada has gone through the same economic and social changes, or at least many of them, uh, as the U.S. since the middle of the 20th century, yet has not seen the same precipitous decline in unionization. The unionization rate in the U.S. and Canada followed fairly similar paths from 1920 to the mid-1960s, at which point they began to diverge drastically. It's differences in labor law and public policy which are at the root of this disparity. First, Canadian law is simply more hospital to, uh, hospitable to unions. Several provinces have bans on temporary or permanent strike or replacement, which don't e exist in the U.S. There is no Canadian equivalent of right-to-work laws that disempower unions. In Canada, they have card check. <clears throat> If the majority of people in a, in a company want to unionize, all they got to do is basically vote, write it in on a card, and there's a union. There's no extended waiting period where employers <clears throat> can basically uh, threaten, fire, campaign on their own time, on their own uh, employees' time, against the union, specifically set up to hurt the chances uh, and the, the ability of people to unionize. In Canada, the election is typically required to occur within five to ten days after the petition. Canada has a process called first contract arbitration. This provides a means to resolving a bargaining impasse between unions and employers during initial contract negotiations after a union has been formed. Although the process is rarely sought, its primary benefit is to encourage the negotiation process because, of course, management in this country unionize. They want to slow walk it uh, to show that the union is ineffective for workers. So uh, that is obviously what we need in this country, a right to unionize in this country. But maybe next time.